Okay, yeah, I guess. So now we're just gonna make sure. I know I have to cut a six and a half by six and a half inch square. So once everything's squared up on the edge here, we're just gonna go ahead and line our ruler up with the six and a half inch mark on our board, our cutting mat. And we're just gonna cut because this will create a strip for us. So you see when you unfold it, it's just a long strip. And now we're gonna go ahead and cut this into six and a half inch pieces so that we can create our squares. So first, I'm gonna go ahead and trim off this little edge here that is uneven, that's the salvage edge. So I'm just gonna like line up my ruler so that it's straight and I'm just gonna cut off like an inch or so just so we have a nice straight edge there. And now I'm gonna go ahead and line this up. Oop. I'm gonna go ahead and line this up on my mat just so it's squared off. Move the extra fabric. All right, and then I'm gonna go ahead and make my six and a half inch cut again. So I'm just lining that up. And we're gonna cut that. So there, now we have two six and a half inch by six and a half inch squares, and we need a total of eight. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut those as well. So again, I'm just gonna slide this over, line it up, and we're gonna go ahead and cut at the six and a half inch mark again. And we have two more squares, and then I believe we can get one more square out of this, or two more squares out of this, sorry, and then we'll have to cut another one to get a total of eight squares. Now we have two more. So I'm going to go ahead and cut a few more. So now I have a few extra squares just because I did cut um, a full strip. So I have a few extra and I only need eight, but it's fine because we can always save them and make something else with them. But what's good about that now is I can kind of choose what uh, squares I want in the quilt. So like I know I want some of these little bears in it, so I'll save like that square. And, like that square is kind of cute. And then I like this one with the honeycomb and the bees. That's cute as well. So you kind of just like pick and choose what squares you want included in the quilt. I love the little bear with the bee antlers or whatever antlers, yeah, antennas. Eight, there we go. And then I just have like four left over, but we can always make like a little pillow, a little burp cloth or something out of those extra ones. Just kind of what happens when you're cutting squares, it's fine. But now we have eight of these. Now I bought two large patterns, so that's why I'm doing eight and eight. But if you have one large pattern you want to use, cut 16. I'm just doing eight and eight because that's what I want to do. Um, so yeah. So I'm just going to set those aside and we're going to work on our next fabric. Um, I have this cute little bee fabric so I'm also going to cut some large 6.5 by 6.5 inch squares with this one as well. So you're going to want to fold your fabric in half salvage to salvage and then we're going to give it a nice little uh, press just to get all these wrinkles out, especially if you washed your fabric, which I do recommend because you're obviously going to be washing a quilt and you want it to um not shrink or anything when you wash the quilt so pre-wash your fabric when you're making a quilt definitely do that also if it's for a baby you probably just want to clean it anyway because who knows where the fabric's been um but it will get wrinkly in the wash so So now that's good and ironed, I'm going to go ahead and take this and I'm going to fold the folded edge up to the salvage edge. This just gives us an easier working area to uh, cut 
cut the fabric. And I'm just going to press that again so it's nice and smooth. Kind of stays together. Okay, nice and smooth. We can go ahead and get cutting. We're doing the same thing that we did with the bears. We're cutting six and a half by six and a half inch squares. Um, it doesn't really matter for squares, but once you start cutting the rectangles, if you have directional fabric, you're going to want to pay attention to which direction that fabric is going. Um, for squares, it doesn't really matter until we assemble the quilt later on, but for cutting purposes, if you're cutting a rectangle, just make sure you're cutting in the direction it is going to appear in the final product. So now I'm going to be cutting out the rectangles and this is where if you have directional fabric it's going to matter. Um, I do not so we're just going to do, I'm going to go ahead and cut six and a half this way and then once I get the strips I'll cut the three and a half um, sides just because I know I can get more out of the strips that way. Um, but I would recommend since this has like the triangles and like you're going to be doing a lot of flipping and stuff. I would recommend getting non-directional fabric just because it'll be a little bit easier if you're a beginner. But anyway, we're going to cut these out. We need, I need 64. Yeah, I need 64. Obviously, if you're making a quilt that's larger than a baby quilt, you'll need more or less. Um, but yeah, I'm just going to cut out my six and a half inch strips and see where we go from there. I just started off with three strips. We're going to see where this gets us. I'm going to unfold it. And I'm going to cut off this salvage edge here. Because we don't want the uh, information on there. Out of that strip, I got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I got ten, so I'm probably gonna have to cut that would be thirty three. I'm gonna have to cut like four more strips. Hey, I got something, something to say. I'm just so sick of hearing everyone complain. I know it's tough. Okay, so we're going to start with making our flying geese first. So for that, you're going to want to take one of your rectangle pieces and two of the three and a half by three and a half inch squares. These are the ones that you cut 128 of. So this is going to be your main background color. And what we're going to do is we're going to take both these squares and I'm just going to line them up on my mat so that this diagonal is like on a straight line here and you're going to want to make a line through the center of this square from corner to corner. I'm just going to use a pencil. You can use like a fabric marker or whatever if you want to. It doesn't really matter. It's going to be on the back side. So I'm just lining that up again on the other one and just marking a line down the center. You can kind of see it. It's very faint. I don't want it to show through the front, obviously. But that's what it's going to look like. Now you're going to take one of your squares, just one for now, and we're going to take the rectangle, and you're just going to take this, and, and you're going to place it on one side of the rectangle and you're just going to make sure your line is running from this corner to the middle so you don't want to put it like you don't want to put it like this where the the lines running that way you want to make sure it's this way so that your line goes like that from like this top left corner to the bottom center and I'm just going to take a couple clips 
just to hold this in place here. And now we're going to take this over to the sewing machine and we're just going to sew directly across that line. And I'm lining it up right on that line that I drew, that pencil mark on diagonal. And we're going to just go ahead and start sewing, just a straight stitch. Backstitch if you want, it doesn't really matter um, because we're going to be sewing more stuff together. I just do it anyway, just for extra safety. Now you can actually keep this on the sewing machine and just do the rest of your blocks. I like to chain them because it just, go, it just goes a little bit faster. So you can just grab another one of your blocks that you have prepped. I would prep them all in one step and then just run them through the machine and then move on to the next step. That's what I like to do. I find it easier. So I'll literally just lift this up. I'll push that one back a little bit just so there's some distance between the different uh, stitches here. And we'll just go again. And then as you can see when this comes off the machine, there's like the little like stitch there. Now when this comes off the machine, you just have like a little stitch there. All you have to do is just give that a snip and you'll have two separate pieces and then you just do that for however many you uh, sew. So I'm going to go ahead and do this like first step on all of these and then I'll be right back. So once you've batch stitched all of the uh, squares onto your rectangles, the, just the one side so far, we're going to go ahead and trim these down. So I'm going to start with one here and you're going to want to make sure you go on this, the corner side here. So it should look like this and this piece here is going to fold down like that. But we're going to just trim off this triangle here. So. You're going to measure a quarter of an inch from the stitch line there. Right, so we're going to take our little square corner here and that's the stitch line. We're going to take our ruler and we're just going to line it up so that we are a quarter of an inch away from the stitch mark. So I just line up my line right on the, uh, I'm just lining my line up right on the stitch mark and then we're going to just cut this corner off. So just take your rotary cutter, slice that right off. You'll have some little triangles. These would be good for like half square triangles, honestly, as you can see. So you can save these pieces if you want or just throw them away if you don't see yourself using them. But I'm a quilter, so I will keep them. So now you're going to have a piece that looks like this. And this is one half of your flying goose, <laughs> flying geese uh, stitch. So next we're just going to go ahead and um, you want to cut all these. And the next step will be to fold these and press them because it's going to end up looking like this and then you have one side and we're going to repeat the same steps on the other side but I'm going to hurry up and cut these and then we'll move along to the next step. Okay, so we got all of these cut now. We're going to go ahead and press them. So like this. We're going to go ahead and we're just going to fold this over and give it a good press. And I just like to give it a press on the back as well just to make sure it's all good to go. Alright, and then you should have a rectangle that looks something like that. I'm going to go ahead and just iron the rest of these open. Okay, 
Alright, so our pieces should all be nice and ironed, and now we're basically and now we're basically going to repeat the exact same steps that we did for this yellow triangle on the other side. So you should still have a stack of like more triangle square things that go on this side. So mine are already marked, and you're just going to want to make sure you're doing this correctly. So we're going to lay this on top here. And you're going to want to make sure that the diagonal line is going this way so that when you sew it, you are able to fold this piece back like this and you'll have a flying geese uh, piece. So I'm just going to go ahead and pin all these and then we'll get to sewing like we did with the other side. Okay, so now I have one of the flying geese uh, pieces finished. So once you've finished all of these, this is what they should look like after they're cut and pressed and everything. And now we're going to take this and we are going to go ahead and take two of our other uh, three and a half inch square pieces. And we are going to basically sew these on to either side of the flying geese piece so it'll look something like that when it's finished. But of course you're going to lay these right side together and you're just going to sew the side down here. So I'm going to go ahead and do that with all of these, and I'll be back to show you what that looks like. So once you've sewed on squares to both sides of your flying goose piece, uh, this is what it should look like. So it's going to look something like this. We, I still have to press these, but you can go ahead and set these aside. This is going to be um, the side of your piece here. So. We're done with that piece of the block. Um, I'm just going to finish cutting these apart because I chain sewed them. I'm going to set those aside and then we're going to sew our other block. Alright, so our next step now is to assemble the, um, basically the middle piece of our, um, square. So, you're going to take one of your larger squares and now as you can see this has a directional pattern so if you have a directional pattern this is where that's going to come into play. We're taking the other half of our flying geese that we made earlier and we're going to take two of them and we are going to place these on either side of our large square piece so like one on this side and one will be on that side obviously put right sides together and sew down both sides and this is going to create our center piece because on the top and the bottom are where the other pieces that we made are going to go. Um, but I'll assemble these really quick and then we'll get to ironing and re-sewing some more squares. So once you have those two sides sewn onto your main large square, it's going to look something like this. Super cute. Um, but yeah, that's all done, so now I'm just going to go ahead and we're going to press all of our pieces open so that they're easier to assemble because we have to assemble these with these. So let's go to the ironing board. So now that we have all of our block pieces sewn together, we need to um, iron these. So since these pieces are going to be going together with this in the middle, and then two of these are going to go on either side to create our block. This is what our block is essentially going to look like. So what we're going to want to do when we're ironing these is these seams, we're going to want to press them inwards and we're going to want to press these seams outwards. That way when we assemble the blocks, our seams can nest nicely together. So. I'm going to go ahead and do that really quick. So with this block, I'm flipping it over and I'm going to press these seams inwards because we want to be able to nest them. So I'm just giving everything a nice press towards the middle. And it's looking good. So as you can see, my seams are pressed towards the center. 
And now for these pieces, since we put the other seams in, we are going to press these seams out. So, stop a lot of the bulk on this seam since we do have like the goose seam there. Um, but yeah, that's what it's going to look like with those seams folded the other way. Okay, so now we're going to take one of these pieces here where we have the large square and the two flying geese and we're going to take the piece with the one flying geese and the two um, little squares here and this is going to be sewn so that it looks like this. We're going to have one on the top and the bottom but I'm just going to do the one side first so we're going to take that and we're just going to place it right sides together make sure that the triangle piece meets with that square and you're just going to want to like center it and make sure it goes. If it doesn't like fit exactly, it's fine because we're going to trim the squares at the end. You just want to get it as close as possible and then we're just going to stitch along this top here at a quarter of an inch. Okay, so now all of our squares are completed. So when you open them up, this is what they should look like. Super cute. Um, now we're just going to go ahead and flatten these out so that we can start uh, quilting and assembling and squaring these up. So I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to press all these seams. So now that all of our squares are assembled and pressed flat, we're going to go ahead and we're going to square these off because as you can see some of these edges are like just not even, so we're going to make sure they're even. Um, these have to be 12 and a half inches by 12 and a half inches. So I'm just going to go ahead and use my mat here. Alright, so to make all the sides even, I'm just going to square it up. Usually I would use like a square ruler just so um, I can make sure like it's centered and everything. But I don't have a 12 inch ruler that is square. So we're just going to um, even out one side. So this side's mostly even already. But I'm just going to go ahead and line up my ruler and I'm just going to trim off a very very little bit because you don't want to change the size of this square too much. My squares are already a little bit smaller than they should be but it's fine you know it happens. But yeah like I'm just going to trim off a little bit just so that side's even and we're just going to go around and do this to the whole block. So now that the side's even it should be easy to line up your ruler. Um, Alright, now that all of my pieces are nice and squared and even, I'm going to set them aside and we're going to go ahead and chop up our batting. Since I'm doing a quilt as you go style quilt, we're not going to be assembling the top first and then making a quilt sandwich. We're not doing that. We're going to be doing the quilt as you go method, which is super nice because these are like, you deal with smaller squares since I have a small sewing machine, blah blah blah, you know. Um, but yeah, I'm going to cut this batting up into um, 16 13 inch by 13 inch squares. Since we have 16 12 inch by 12 inch squares, you want to make it a little bit bigger just so you have wiggle room in case there's some shifting during sewing. But yeah, I'm going to cut these up into squares and then we can start quilting. My pieces here, I just kind of rough cut them out um, on the seams. Nothing, I didn't like measure them like super precisely or anything. I just kind of cut them out um, 13 inches by 13 inches. More of like a rough cut. Um, this piece is still connected. They don't have to be precise or anything. They don't have to be like super square because you're going to be trimming these at the end anyway. You just want to make sure that they're bigger than. Alright, so I'm just going to go ahead and assemble these like little um, like mini quilt sandwiches. Um, you're probably just going to want to take your quilt block and you take your quilt block and we're just going to lay this like on top of it just like as centered as you can get it. So it'll look something like that. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm just going to make all of my little quilt sandwiches real fast just so that they're prepped and ready to go for so I can just sew them all real quick. So 
So my machine has all these like stitches programmed into it and since I don't have the proper foot to be doing uh, like a free motion type quilt and I also just don't have experience to free motion quilts, um, I'm going to be using some of these like decorative stitches because I want the quilt to look a little more unique. I've only ever did like a stitch in the ditch quilts which is just following the lines of the uh, you're just like following the lines so I would just like stitch like around the square or the triangles you would just do that kind of thing but I want to make it a little bit more decorative a little bit more cute so I think I'm going to use some of these um I'm going to be using like this uh, squiggly stitch here this leaf stitch and then this like star stitch I've already started to kind of um do that you can kind of see the like squigglies I just did like an X across this like big square with the squigglies and then on my triangles down the center I used this like star stitch I don't know I'm just kind of playing around and really just doing whatever I think will look good to fill in some of those spaces um that's really all quilting is is just kind of playing around filling in the space where there's like a lot of gaps with some stitching um obviously you don't want to do anything too busy on your patterned pieces um but yeah we're just kind of playing around see how this goes all right I don't know if you guys can see this but I finished all of the quilting on this block and all of my other blocks. Now we're going to go ahead and we're just going to trim off this excess uh, batting and then we can get to sewing the quilt top together. Alright, so now I'm going to be lying out my blocks so that I can kind of get an idea of where I want everything to go when I sew these together. I'm just kind of like laying them out. Since I'm using two different center pieces, I'm just going to be doing the bees, the bears, the bees, the bears. You know? And I'm just going to kind of lay these blocks out where I kind of want them to go. Just so I have an idea of how I'm going to sew them together. Laying everything out like this kind of helps you get a good idea to see what your finished quilt will look like. So that's fun. You can kind of really see it uh, come together, which I enjoy a lot. So now that I laid everything out and I know how I want things to go, it is time for me to pin and we're going to be able to uh, sew these together. So I'm going to take the first two pieces that I had laid out and these are going to end up laying side by side like this and now if you have directional fabric like I do this is where you want to pay close attention so you're going to want to make sure that it is the correct side up. Um, this will be the first panel, this will be my second panel so I'm just going to fold them right sides together and we're going to sew along this further side here that way we can make sure everything is facing the correct way. You're just going to want to line these up as best as you can just to make sure that your lines all meet. Sometimes I like to just meet up my lines and I'll pin there. And again, go ahead and make sure your lines match up and you can pin there as well. Now we'll just go ahead and sew up the side once everything's all lined up. Hey, I got something, something to say. I'm just so sick of hearing everyone complain. I know it's tough and I know there's pain. But hitting bottom is the only way to change. So I'll keep hustling, you keep struggling, bitch I'm humbling, keep mumbling, I'll keep doubling, you keep bluffing, you've got nothing, I'll keep hustling. Work 
is I've seen a lot of people Who don't know what thirst is I've had a taste of evil And tried to cure the sickness But I just keep my head down And focus on the facts I'm setting down gravel While you just follow the path I'll lead them into battle While you're just too scared to act I'll leave the knife right in my back So I'll keep hustling You keep struggling Bitch, I'm humbling Keep mumbling I'll keep doubling You keep bluffing You've got nothing I'll keep hustling